Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to be telling you about one of the most important features of VS6. And, and literally, this is, this is literally the most important feature, I think, for any sort of modern JavaScript that every developer should know and have in their arsenal. So this is something I didn't really discover for a long time. And, and it, I know it seems kind of stupid or whatever. I'm not ever claiming to be the best developer in the world. I'm really not. I try to be up to date, uh, but I'm simply not. So source maps is is something that has been out since the HTML5 specification. It's taken a little while for tools like Babel or Webpack um, to be able to get them up to date and also for browsers to be able to, to use them. But Chrome has the ability to use uh, source maps to your advantage. So if you wanted to read about source maps, you can go to this HTML5 Rocks article about it uh, and learn all about it there. But um, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know in order to be able to use it. Um, and with Babel, it makes it very, very simple. But I want to explain uh, why this is so important. So let me go over to the, um, we're going to go to like say the React project on GitHub. Now, if you look at a lot of modern day JavaScript that's being written, and uh, and I, actually I'm going off the top of my head, so I don't even know if uh, this is going to be the best example or not, but let's just see. So here you have React component. Um, so you can see it's using these require statements, which is uh, like Node.js module importing and things like that. So obviously this project is being compiled just the way that we're using Babel to compile our code, and it's being you know brought into this you know this you know React JS file that we end up including into our project. But React JS as, as itself as a project is much greater than that. It's it's much more complicated. It's spread out all over different files. They have builds and and, and unit tests and things that are being written on it. But with source maps, what it gives you the ability to do is it actually gets you the ability to step through your code before it turns into the then compiled. Um, like if you ever tried to, to step through React code, like when it's not even minified, even unminified React code, it can be very difficult because React's being run through stuff that, that cleanses it and, and it's ES6 is being changed to older versions of JavaScript. So even you know, the code that you write when you're trying to debug it in the browser, it's different than what you wrote. So source maps gives us the ability to actually debug ES6 the way that we write it. Um, and, and that's why I said it's, it's extremely important. So if we look at what's going on here, let's, um, let's run this, uh, this command here uh, just the way we have. And just so you guys know, when we're doing npm run babel, we're telling it to run first and we're outputting bundle JS and then we're saying hyphen W, which stands for watch. That way we don't have to keep running this command every time we change our file. And it takes this first and it compiles it to an older version of JavaScript into this bundle. And you can see this compiled version is quite a bit different than what we wrote over here. So wouldn't it be helpful if we could actually debug what we wrote over here than, than this? Because it gets a lot more complicated when you have a file that has 25,000 lines in it and a bunch of different projects. Um, so source maps gives us that ability and it's as easy as doing this. We're going to press control C to stop this watch. And all I have to do is say hyphen hyphen source maps. So now what this is going to do, it's going to work the exact same way. But if we look at the folder structure, we're going to notice, or if you look over here, we're going to have this bundle.js map file. And it looks really weird. It's cryptic. You don't have to understand what it's going, what's going on there. But what I want to show you is that if we go to our uh, our page here and we inspect, we look inside of our console. Let's just refresh this so you can see all that stuff is outputting the way it was in the earlier videos. But if I go over to sources and I look inside, uh, you know, this bundle. So one of the things I want to make sure you guys have this enabled, if you go over to Chrome and click these uh, three buttons and go down to settings, I just want to make sure you have this enabled. Uh, if you scroll down, you should see enable JavaScript source maps. This has to be set to true. And if it's not, you're not going to actually be able to do this. Now, if I refresh, watch what happens. Um, yeah, so you can see source map detected. So we actually want to be able to see that, but we're not going to be stepping through our bundle file. The goal is to be able to step through uh, you know this this class file in first even though first isn't even Associated you can see if we highlight over it says from source map So first isn't even remember we didn't even include first into our HTML page But the source maps are finding first and it's basically being being able to map the code from bundle to first so if I like 
uh, refresh, then you know I hit this breakpoint in first. And once again, that's that's. Yeah, I might have to be careful because like hitting F11 on my computer ends up uh, shutting off my recorder. But let me go ahead and just uh, step into the next call, and you can see. Okay, and now I'm stepping down in here, and now you can see the arguments passed into the subclass. Super hasn't been called, so I'm going to try to step out of that. But once again, the, the benefit of a source map is the fact that you're able to step through this code without actually having to um, go into the compiled stuff. So, like, let me just get out of here. Right? Those VM files are part of, like, the, the, I think, Chrome and the way that um, Chrome is executing the JavaScript. I think a lot of that stuff happens in memory. But the idea is that you would be able to put breakpoints on certain areas, like this console log statement. And if you refresh it, I guess that one got overridden, though. Hold on a second. Yeah, the, the first print name was overridden. That's why that breakpoint didn't get hit. But, it, you know, once again, it's a, it's a beneficial thing that you're able to step through because especially when your code gets very, very complicated. And uh, I've been able to do this also with React and Redux and uh, a lot of the ES6 that I'm writing in, in React and Redux. It, it makes it so much easier to be able to step through. All right, guys, so that's really all I have about source maps in ES6. Let me know if you have any questions. And thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. And you guys have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.